Hello, my name is Lily Van Brocklin, and I have the challenge of introducing Claire Lee. Claire Lee is clearly a prominent member of the St. Mary's student body. I must admit that I have never met someone more vocally opinionated, but her fearlessness to argue injustice inspires us all to use our voices. Claire was also born cool. I'm so thankful to have had Claire as a friend because if she hadn't introduced me to indie music in third grade, I might still be listening to Maroon 5. <laughs> I highly recommend that you listen to Claire today because she is wise beyond her years and could probably teach us all something. So please help me in welcoming Claire Beatrice Donnie Lee. In my life, I have learned maybe one thing about myself, and that is I love movies. So when making decisions, I think, what kind of movie would my life be most like following this decision? And is there an alternative I would rather watch? So far, I would say this method has about a 57-ish percent accept success rate, which seems low, but if you think about it, it's not that bad for a 17-year-old. But then, oh no, college. <laughs> I'm nearing the phase where I have to decide, at least in a very general sense, where I want to go and what I want to study. And it's not that I don't know what I want to do, it's just that I have so many very specific choices and I can't pick between them. It's like I'm choosing between four different movies, but they're all wildly different, and I can only watch one and I don't know what mood I want to be in. Now, I know, as any person above the age of 24 constantly feels the need to tell me, unprompted, I'm likely not going to end up anywhere I could even imagine now. The only thing is, knowing myself, I will always have that voice inside my head wondering what would have happened had I gone in some other direction. And for those of you questioning my indecisiveness, because you have seen me make many snap decisions with my trademark style of overconfidence that I then brand as an executive decision that everyone must follow, <laughs> I will tell you to support my argument, I did write four different senior speeches. <laughs> stressed by, by the idea that I could say anything without anyone yelling that I'm being so Donny right now. <laughs> Ultimately, I just tried to combine them all, and I know I'll still regret everything I say the moment I step off stage, or possibly even as I'm speaking. Because, like my entire life, I only get one shot at this, and I can't help but fear my inevitable regret. As I was writing this speech, some 21-year-old guy in muddies journaling about Sappho politely interrupted my conversation. <laughs> in an attempt to help by informing me about how deep life really is and broadening your horizons and all that preachy stuff. But while he was talking, I realized this man is alone in a coffee shop on Valentine's Day <laughs> reading mournful ancient Greek poetry. He probably has his fair share of regrets. But also, he seemed happy and he was kind, and I realized then, not to tell you all, never regret anything, live your life, we're all dying anyway, because, <laughs> because that's not humanly possible. Instead, pick and choose what you regret. Trust this lesson because it is coming from a person who has a lot to regret. Yes, I'm talking about middle school. <laughs> because when I look back at those years, what I regret the most is not the knee-high socks, or Lily's and my Pierce the Veil Instagram fan page, <laughs> but instead how I was exclusionary and dismissive of everyone who I thought was judging me, which was most people. Because they weren't judging me, or maybe they were, because it was me in middle school, but I still chose to be unkind and miserable, and that's what I regret. Or it's like those nights when you're driving home from your friend's house, and it's late, and Walnut Grove is empty, and you're alone, and you're listening to Ribs by Lord, <laughs> and just thinking about how your childhood and your St. Mary's years are passing and you're never getting them back again. And I remember not my many mistakes in these halls, but instead all those good moments, like derailing a math class to get married, <laughs> or excitedly telling DL that my A push scores were delayed because my handwriting was so bad, <laughs> or getting more pink slips in fourth grade than any other member of the class of 2020, <laughs> or begging Victoria for not months, but years to play Canon in D for my senior speech, 
only for her to get the flu week of. <laughs> and I think about how I'm never getting those moments back. And the only thing I regret is not appreciating them more. And yes, Lord, it does feel so scary getting older. <laughs> so back to my main dilemma. As a naturally aggressive person, I've always lived by the ideal that I can have it all if I just work hard enough. I can do all the extracurriculars, take the classes, hang out with friends, get eight hours of sleep, and still watch every Oscar-nominated movie before the award show. And it's kind of worked, sort of. There were admittedly some bumps along the way. But I can't strong arm my way through the American higher education system. Or... <laughs> or the rest of my life. That might be an opponent I can't beat because as much as I hate to admit it, I'm still just a 5'2", 17-year-old that just learned how to preheat an oven. <laughs> we don't have all the time in the world and there are some things we're gonna have to miss. But as I've learned, you can't have everything you want if you want everything. We only get one shot at life, so don't waste it regretting or fearing regret. Choose to commiserate over and learn from the unkindness and the unappreciativeness, not the lost time or the missed opportunities or the mistakes. I've dyed my hair over 15 times and I just got a perm. <laughs> Trust me, it's definitely possible to see past your mistakes. Thank you.